Hi there, welcome to Sean Cameron Photographic and welcome back. It's been a while since my last video as I've been away at a nine day event. And then I've got other, I had other things to do, but I'm back now and I'm champing at the bit to talk about my experience with the Z7 II. Well, first impressions. Well, the Z7 II is exactly the same to use as the rest of the Z series. Once you've used the Z7, the Z6, the Z62, the Z7 II was about as familiar as putting an old glove on. The size, the dials, the buttons, the menu, all pretty much identical. And I tell you what, all reassuringly familiar to Nikon DSLR users too. Is this a Z7 II? No, it's not, I had to send it back. But it doesn't matter because it's that identical. So why would I bother to test the Z7 II when I have both the Z6 and the Z6 II? Well, under the bonnet, there are a couple of big, big differences between the two series. Firstly, the Z7 II has a 46 megapixel sensor. That's the same as my D850. And heading for double, the 25 megapixels the Z62 has. Secondly, the Z72 has 493 focus points. 220 more than the 273 on my Z62. How many do I get on my D850? 153, the same as my D5. So let me repeat that. 493 focus points on the Z7 series. Now, of course, these differences will cost you an extra thousand pounds. With the Z6 II retailing for 1,819, and the Z7 II topping it at 2,819. So it's precisely a thousand pounds more. So those were the headline differences. So why not just get a Z7? Because so far, they're the same camera. Well, firstly, the Mark II does another way one frames per second. One frames per second, not a lot of difference. There are some very, there are some very minor upgrades that you probably wouldn't even notice. But more importantly, it now has two memory card slots. Yeah, remember we've been crying out for them two instead of the single meagre offering from the earlier series. It's got the same dual processor as the Z6 II. Now that's exciting because it should improve the focus tracking that was so controversial amongst Nikon critics. So, my plan was to have a Z7 II for one day to test it at a wildlife park. Unfortunately, due to circumstances well within my control, it didn't quite turn out that way. So my latest offering was shot over two days. And you know what? I'm actually glad that I had it for that long as I really enjoyed using it. But hang on, we need some pictures for the review. I need to be over there. Now that's better. If you've seen my reviews before, you know that I'm gonna show a video of what I've seen through the camera and then some of the photos so you can see how they came out. And a few we will zoom in and have a closer look. Now, the majority of the photos that I'm gonna show you are taken with my Nikon 300 2.8. Don't worry, I'll let you know if I use my other trusty lens, the 70 to 200 2.8. You can spot it if you look carefully, precariously perched on that fence over there. Now the majority of the photos I took were with the Nikon 300mm 2.8 VR. And I'll mention if I use my other lens, the 70 to 200 2.8 VR too. Well I started the day off with single point focus, as these are obviously too far away for the eye tracking. Yes I know it's ISO 800, but I really want to see how noisy it can get at a pretty average setting. Originally I wasn't going to crop in at all, but to be honest, you want to see what the nearly finished image would be like, don't you? Just remember, I don't do much to the RAW files other than slightly sharpen, 62 in Adobe RAW, and contrast, 
which is less adjustment than if I shot JPEGs of course. Let's crop in to take a closer look. Yes, it's a little noisy, and I do find the Z series can be, but it's okay, isn't it? That's okay, 800. Now, before you all fast forward or switch off completely, this is not going to be a Nikon Z series bashing video. No, 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 no. Wait until you see what it can do with ISO 140, and even 2200. Okay, moving on to the Meerkats, and I'm still using ISO 800. We'll compare it to a lower setting in a minute, and I've switched to animal eye tracking. As you'd expect, we lose the eye tracking when the Meerkat turns away. What else would happen? There's no eye to track, but wait until you see how quickly it finds it again. Bang, straight on. Come on guys, that's impressive. And so are these images. Sharp, good colour, and at f2.8, the Meerkat really stands out against that background. I've lowered the ISA to 140, so let's see if there's a difference. I have to say that when the eye tracker comes into play, it's amazing. Yes, it sometimes misses it and it goes slightly above, but you know, it still manages to keep it in focus. Not only is it processing the one eye, but it can also suggest switching to the other eye and it knows where it is in relation to the first. That's some serious processing going on. So let's take a look at the stills. Yes, I need to up the vibrance and saturation. Don't forget that these are essentially raw files. Maybe a little more clarity and contrast and it'll be as good as the video which is really what the camera is seeing anyway. Zoom in and I think you'll agree that it's pretty sharp. Look at the reflection in those eyes. I shifted my position so that there was a distracting light behind the meerkat. I wanted to see if it fooled the eye tracking. I think it's obvious it took no notice at all. With all that woodwork in the way, the eye tracking can't pick anything up in fact, as the auto area can't decide what I want, it's chosen to do nothing at all. The focus tracking box is too big to use, so I choose my old favourite, single focus point. Could the Sony or Canon do better? I don't know yet, but it's not exactly a huge chore to change settings, is it? It can be done in various different ways. I use one of two. Press the information button, then select AF area mode and then whichever mode you want. Then press menu once again to get back out. Or I've set the F2 button and front dial to achieve the same thing. As I said, I chose single point focus and I can now pinpoint the precise area of focusing amongst all that shrubbery. What do you reckon? Arty or annoyingly distracting? Whichever, you can't deny that it's now in focus using the old method. Okay, here's a quick tip. Sometimes the camera doesn't want you want to pick up the subject you've actually focused on. Pressing OK lets you choose what you actually want to focus on. And once you've attained that, press OK again to start the tracking area that you chose. Or press the zoom out button to go back to eye tracking. Having given the system a bit of a helping hand and I hope this gives you a helping hand too. Back to the video. Okay, upward and onward. We found a baby zebra or a foal to be more precise and I added this as I couldn't miss out on capturing the image of a weak old zebra foal. It was way too far away and this was obviously cropped in but we'll get back to all of that later. Okay, we went to the lemurs next and this is very, very low light. And you can see that I've picked quite a high ISO. 2200 to be precise, this will be a good noise test for the camera. I started with single point focus, then changed to eye detection. The camera just couldn't pick up the eye. I had to settle instead for it picking up the body and the head. But suddenly it spotted something to the left. 
and everything important went out of focus. I pressed the OK button and opted to control the tracking. I don't know if it was because of a dirty glass panel between me and the lemur, or more likely the low light. Anyway, here are the images that I managed to get. For an ISO of 2200, they're not bad, are they? In fact, pretty respectable, I'd say. The background's a little noisy, certainly a little noisier than I'd prefer. But the lemur is sharp. I mean, look at those eyes. Stunning. The lemur got a friend and I tried eye tracking again, but unfortunately it lost the plot completely. So back to single point focus we go. It seems that that is the safest method in low light. It started to rain, in fact it was torrential. So we rushed back to the zebra foal. I wanted to use the opportunity to see how the tracking coped in the rain, especially with me wobbling the camera around. Yes, I know the zebras weren't exactly moving, but I think I probably made up for them. A slightly pointless test. However, a great, if somewhat blatant excuse to photograph the foal. As a matter of interest, the rain had caused a minor glitch with the Z7 II. When I tried using the multi-selector, every time I clicked right, the menu went off. Hmm, not as weatherproof as I'd hoped. A quick mopping up session over a hot tea seemed to sort it though. When the rain finally stopped, I went back to compare. It's worth noting how big the focus box is when you compare it to the subject, especially at that distance. Talking of the focus box being too big, I can't get just the eyes. And you can see at 2.8, if the camera focuses on the front of the otter's face, the eyes are possibly gonna be out of focus. Not ideal. We now have two otters, but the eye tracking was hit and miss. I was absolutely gutted not to get the other otter yawning. So I pressed the OK button, manually set the tracking to get a few shots. Again, the quality is there and I'm more than satisfied with it but I can't help but keep thinking about that missed shot and the fact I probably could have got it with single point focus. Cross with myself. I guess in hindsight, I wouldn't have used that particular focus mode if I hadn't been testing it for that particular photograph. But the photos were pretty sharp that I got anyway. Can I just use this opportunity to thank all my new subscribers, all my old subscribers, everyone who's commented, watched, liked my last few videos. It's, do you know, it's been quite overwhelming. Thank you so much, everybody. I must keep trying to do what you like. Anyway, enough of that gushing. Let's go back to the video. Okay, from otters to wallabies. Now, if the full 46 megapixel file size is too large, you can always opt for a small one. I used raw large for most of the day, but I wanted to show you how good the quality is at raw medium. Now, the red boxes are how much you can actually crop in. As you can see, the box on the left is smaller because the file size is so much larger than the medium raw. It therefore retains incredible quality with a closer crop. That's the power of the 46 megapixel sensor. That's where the extra £1,000 goes to. But I'm not complaining about the quality of the medium raw either. You just get better quality with bigger images from large raw than medium. Go on, you want to see it compared to the Z6 II now, don't you? Now here it is next to the raw medium of the Z7 II. Which do you reckon is which? Oh, come on, you've already seen the picture. Now cropped in. Now, if anybody's wondering how I did this, it's simple. I opened up the full file at 100%, then cropped from the top to the bottom of the window without ever moving the image. That, in my mind, gives us the correct proportions. Now, the larger files from both cameras, ignoring the annoying cloud that appeared as soon as I picked up the Z6 II, which is why it's darker. Now cropped in, what do you think? I'll tell you what, you make your own decision. I wouldn't be unhappy with either of those. 
So, what have we tested so far? Low, middle, high ISO, tick. Various focus modes, techniques, and environments, tick. How it copes in the rain, okay. Large and medium raw files, tick. In fact, I think it's doing well. In fact, it's doing very well. But when I've taken control, now let me explain that. When we use DSLRs, we tend to stick with a favorite focus mode. You know what mine is? It's the single focus point. It means that I can pinpoint exactly what I want to set my focus on. One of my subscribers made the quite brilliant observation that with the Z series, we need to use all the focus modes to learn them to decide which is best for the current shot that we're going to do and the current situation. And do you know that got me thinking? In this instant push button world, have we become too reliant on the camera getting it right? Or should we, as Sid suggests, take time to learn the camera and find out what works best, like we used to in the old days. And taking that even further, are we setting our expectations too high and expecting the camera to capture the perfect image entirely, every time, on its own? Leaving us only to press the shutter button. Now I think manufacturers and their promoters are guilty of actually leading us down that path, but we do not need to follow, do we? We don't need to follow them. And would we actually want to? I like being in control of the camera. Do you like being in control of the camera? I'm sure you do. And yes, I've talked and used the focus tracking in this video, but should I rely on it? Who wants a camera that does everything for them? Where is the skill in that? I want to be a larger part of the image making process, far larger than just deciding where to point the camera. Do you know, I hear so many people describe a camera as rubbish, useless, poor, and quite often based on focus tracking. Does that really stop a camera being good? Surely there's more to it than just that. Dynamic range, ISO performance, ultimate image quality. Does it do the job? I plan to test the, the Canon R6 and the Sony A7 III. And I want to see what all the applause is about. I'm hoping I don't like them because then I might have to change my system. But I will tell you exactly what I think. I will be absolutely honest. I'm gonna go back to the same wildlife park and I'm gonna recreate roughly the same images and scenarios with both those cameras. Probably do them individually just to give them a fair crack at the whip. But anyway, what did I think about the Z7 II? Well, I think it's very clear that it's an incredibly capable camera. Would I swap it for my D850? That's always the question, isn't it? Would I swap it? Do you know, I may well do. It gives me more focus options, and I know I've just been moaning about that, but the options will be there. It gives me the same size images. In fact, it's so close to cool that I'm gonna need another session with both of them side by side, just to decide. It really is that close for me. I'll tell you what, wow. For me, that is a serious bombshell. D850, Z73. Thank you so much for joining me. And if you liked it, don't forget to like it. And if you really liked it, why don't you try on that subscribe button? You know it'll suit you. For now, take care and I will see you soon. Thank you so much.